2016 has been a whirlwind year in pretty much every way. Except for horror games. This year, the horror gaming world was dominated by small indie titles. There were no AAA horror releases in 2016. We didn't have an Until Dawn or an Alien Isolation like we had previous years. Most of the big releases that were slated for 2016 were delayed until 2017, Outlast 2 and Friday the 13th, just to name a couple. To spin it in a more positive light, 2016 was a year of horror surprises. Most of the games on this list appeared suddenly and without warning. Best of all, most of them were priced under $5 or were even free. Well, it's too bad we didn't have a big budget horror game to sink our teeth into, like 2014's Alien Isolation, which I've mentioned for the second time in this video, there were still some good horror experiences this year. Before I get into what's on my list, I'd like to talk about some of the games that aren't on it, for one reason or another. One omission that I know is going to get brought up is Play Dead's Inside, which tends to get listed as a horror game. I don't really consider it a horror game. It's a dark, atmospheric game and it's utterly fantastic, but I didn't find it to fit the profile. However, I recognize that you may disagree, and if you do, consider Inside the honorary number one in this top 10, because even though I don't have it on my list, I think it's a better game than anything on it. I just don't think of it as a horror game is all. Another omission is Dead by Daylight. I'm one of those people that doesn't agree with Overwatch being game of the year because it's a multiplayer only game and the same logic applies here. That's not the only problem I have with Dead by Daylight though. Despite its immense popularity, I think it's lacking a lot of necessary quality of life features and I don't think I'd put it in my top 10 even if it had a single player campaign. I'm also not including any incomplete games or demos on this list. So that means you, Sally Face, you, Home Sweet Home, Hello Neighbor, Rides with Strangers, Lost in Vivo, Stifled, Agony, the list goes on. If it's not a full release, it's not on the list. On that note, I'd like to give two free horror games an honorable mention. Notes of Obsession and The House Abandoned. These are two excellent 20 minute horror experiences with some fresh ideas and a ton of production value. I really wanted to put them on the list, but felt that they were too short to justify placement among the rest of the games, but I highly recommend both of them. Their download links will be in the description, as will all the other games on the list. Lastly, I realize there isn't a single person who will watch this and agree on all the choices. That is totally fine. Horror is one of the more subjective genres in video game, and everyone has a different idea of what the word scary looks and sounds like. But for me, these are the 10 games that did it the best this year. Layers of Fear. Developed by Polish indie studio Bloober Team. It was originally released into early access in 2015, but as a full game in early 2016. It's a game about a painter, his obsession with perfection, and his slow descent into madness. Also searching for checker pieces for a, for a really long time. As you may have guessed, I have my own problems with Layers of Fear. To me, it has too much of a horror funhouse feel to it. Playing Layers of Fear feels like walking through a museum of scripted horror events, some of which I found unintentionally funny. Dumbass. With that said, Layers of Fear's strength is in its art direction and overall aesthetic. It's a game with fantastic visuals, and the scripted events are admittedly impressive. I mean, as far as production value goes, it's probably the best on this list. Great voice acting, good soundtrack, definitely has all the tools it needs to be a great horror game. In my opinion, it mostly settled on being nice to look at. Nevertheless, it still made my top 10 for the year for its presentation alone. Dread Out, Keepers of the Dark. Developed by Indonesian indie devs, Digital Happiness. I know the original Dreadout wasn't for everyone, though I think most people that didn't like it got a little too hung up on its technical shortcomings and didn't give it enough credit for how different it is for a modern horror game. Third person, tons of cool ghosts, this scene. Oh my gosh, we should totally play a game or something. I didn't see, tag, I spy, rock, paper, scissors. It's so boring around here, you know? Keepers of the Dark is a completely separate game that's basically a free roam boss rush mode. You can explore miniature levels at your leisure and fight all sorts of weird new boss ghosts. In my opinion, Keepers of the 
the Dark had a winning ingredient that not many other games this year had. Fun. It was just really fun. Going through all the different worlds, collecting photographs, fighting ghosts. Some of the most fun I had playing a horror game all year. If you didn't like the original Dread Out, chances are you won't like this one either, but I highly recommend trying it if any of the footage you're seeing looks interesting to you. Through the woods. Sorry, I don't know why I keep doing that. I'm gonna keep doing it though. A Norse horror game developed by Norwegian indie studio Antagonist. Through the Woods is an ambitious title full of trolls, wolves, and plenty of other folklore-based monsters. It's a game about a woman searching for her son after he's kidnapped by old Eric as a sacrifice. I'll admit I have a weakness for folklore-based horror games. I even liked Filipino horror game Nightfall Escape. But you know what they say, drivers are sweet lovers. And that was pretty rough to get through. And Through the Woods is no exception. While the monsters are hit or miss, there's a little too much note reading, and some people had a major problem with the voice acting and facial animations, I thought overall, the good outweighed the bad. This is the rare horror game that has character to it. There's proper world building, immersive environments, the type of things forsaken in other games in favor of dark hallways and cheap thrills. It's a shame there aren't more games like this one. Curse! Developed by Stormlord Games. Before I begin, here's a disclaimer. Curse is on rails. With that said, it still manages to be one of the better horror games to come out this year. In the game, you play as a paranormal investigator, sent to check out a house that turns out to be super haunted. One of its strengths, oddly enough, is how scripted it is. It embraces the idea that it is a horror funhouse and turns it into a fun amusement park ride of thrills and chills. There are plenty of chase sequences, jump scares, high intensity moments, but there's also plenty of downtime for reading notes and exploring for more subtle scares. Now I know what you may be thinking, John, you just criticized Layers of Fear for being a horror funhouse. Why is it a strength in this case? I think it's a strength because this game realizes it is what it is and it fully explores the potential of a horror funhouse. Whereas Layers of Fear is too busy making you search for checker pieces. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop bringing that up, I promise. And while I'm sure some will be turned off immediately by the fact that it is on rails, Curse is still worth your time and one of the more fun horror experiences of the year. Sarah is missing. Developed by Monsoon Lab, this is a free game that uses a phone interface to allow the player to find a girl named Sarah who is missing. Cool. The entire game takes place within a simulated phone, allowing you to browse her texts, read her emails, and generally just invade her privacy to piece together what exactly is going on. It's hard to talk about the rest of it without spoiling the story, but if you haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should. Perhaps the best free horror game of the year. Leafy Episode 1 Developed by Coco Studios and Faber Interactive, Leafy is a beautifully crafted horror game that feels like a 2016 take on Amnesia The Dark Descent. You wake up on an island and venture deeper and deeper to discover its hidden secrets. I should probably also mention that at a certain point, you gain telekinetic powers? I thought it was pretty cool, but it might feel out of place to you depending on your expectations. Nevertheless, the atmosphere is terrific, the visuals breathtaking. The monsters are a little underwhelming and the game drags pretty hard in places, but overall, this is a fantastic new horror game. And like the title indicates, it's an episodic series, so episode 2 should be coming sometime in 2017. I hope it won't be too long before it releases, and I can say, Lethe is here! These are the jokes, people. This is, this is the best I could come up with. Dead End Road Developed by DDD Wares, this is an incredibly unique horror game in which you drive through ghost towns on your way to the appropriately named Dead End Road for a confrontation with a demon that's been chasing you. It's a game in which you manage resources, hunt items, and take plenty of risks. A paranormal obstacle course that takes plenty of practice and trial and error to safely navigate. In other words, the game's pretty tough and unforgiving. If you crash your car, lose your mind, or run out of gas, you have to start all over again. No checkpoints. It's a fun, surprising breath of fresh air, and definitely worth the low $3 price tag. Welcome to the game. 
Developed by Reflex Studios, the same dev behind the upcoming Rides with Strangers, Welcome to the Game is a quirky title that centers around browsing the deep web for hidden codes to unlock a red room, all the while dodging mischievous hackers, a nefarious kidnapper, and, and, and this guy. I can see you in there. Fuck! Most of the game is spent in a browser simulation, clicking on various web pages, some of which are taken straight from the deep web, in a harrowing search for eight four-digit codes. It's not immediately exciting, but the highlight of the game is the silent tension and paranoia that results from trying not to be kidnapped or killed during your search. Hearing a chair scrape across the floor in the next room or seeing a location services arrow pop up in the corner of your screen is enough to propel you out of browsing mode and straight for the light switch so you can pretend nobody's home. I have some complaints about the 2.0 update being too difficult, but for those of you that love a challenge, it might be right up your alley. It's probably the best home invasion horror game I've played, a genre that is criminally underrepresented, yes that was a pun, it scratches a very specific itch for me that other games simply haven't even touched. I'm Scared 2016, developed by Ivan Zanotti. This is the full version of the original half hour game I'm Scared a Pixelated Nightmare that burst onto the horror scene in 2012. Like in the original, there's tons of fourth wall breaking antics, but this time, the experience is two to three hours long and takes meta horror to the next level with clever puzzles that require you to switch back and forth between what you do inside the game and what you do outside it. The feeling of playing a game that's actively plotting against you is one that I'm Scared 2016 delivers in spades. It fully commits to chasing the feeling that the original of Pixelated Nightmare gave players in 2012, and it's one of my favorite horror games from this year. Anatomy developed by Kitty Horror Show. This game isn't for everyone, but if you enjoy subtle psychological horror, this $3 game provides an unforgettable experience. The game begins in a seemingly empty house in total silence and slowly builds to an incredible climax as you realize this isn't an ordinary house. There are no jump scares, no hiding in cabinets, no angry face monsters out to eat you for breakfast, toast cornflakes, just you and a bunch of ideas the game plants in your head as you play. Distrust in your own home, fear of the unknown. It all adds up to my favorite horror game of 2016. While I would consider 2016 a disappointment in every conceivable way, including horror games, I'm looking forward to 2017. There are a lot of promising horror games to look forward to in 2017, and I'll be making a list about those games in the next video. Not like the immediate next video, it's, it's gonna take some time to make, but the next video like this one, just to properly set expectations. Thanks for watching, guys. Think critically.